Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla is directed by Jun Vakuda and was released in March of 1974. I love this movie. I grew up with it. In fact, here's my copy I had as a child. It is the original TriStar release of the film from 2004. This is part of their 50th anniversary collection. I picked this up at an FYE probably in about 2007, 2008. This film, when I first got it, I vividly remember thinking it was animated because of the box art. Because they look like cartoon characters. And I don't know, I just thought it was an animated film until I watched it and I'm like, oh, it's not, it's a regular Godzilla movie. I remember watching this one as a lot as a kid, not as much as some other films. I mostly watched a lot, I remember watching a lot of Final Wars, Tokyo SOS, and Against Mega Godzilla. Those were the three I remember watching the most. Then there was like GMK, and then you get into the older films such as Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster and Invasion of Astro Monster. I remember watching those a lot as a kid. The plot is about a group of people investigating the mystery of a statue of the Okinawan mythological creature Shisa. A discovered prophecy mentions a monster threatening to destroy the world, but that two other monsters would rise up and combat the threat. Suddenly Godzilla bursts out of a volcano. No one's sure what's going on, but he's acting unusual. Something's wrong. Anguirus shouldn't attack his friend, Godzilla. Only for another Godzilla to show up and revealing that the other one is a fake imposter. You're mistaken if you think your powers are a match for Mechagodzilla. Then the film suddenly shifts into a Planet of the Apes invasion film. The god Shisa is brought to life as King Caesar. Godzilla and King Caesar defeat Mechagodzilla and peace is restored to Okinawa. When I watched the movie for this video, there were plenty of things I picked up on that I never really noticed before when watching this, and I really wanted to talk about them. One thing I think the Godzilla content online misses is the real-life connections in the movie. Yeah, people compare the original Godzilla to the bomb, but I'm talking about other examples of in other movies of the series. For example, why Ichiro is dressed up that way in All Monsters Attack. In Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Keisuke is on the construction team for the Real Life Expo 75, which was held in Okinawa in 1975. The logo is even seen on his hard hat in the movie. The film actually uses the Expo 75 destruction as part of the film's plot, which is used in the film as a way for the Shisa statue to be found, and also probably to help market the film a bit more in that Godzilla was there in Okinawa. If Godzilla did come to your village, think of it. Everyone in Japan would want to come here. And do you think he will come? Also, isn't it truly convenient that the characters of Keisuke and Saiko traveled by two different ferries to Okinawa? which one of them is conveniently on the poster for the film. How was the trip? Wonderful. Glad you liked it. I'm sure you will enjoy your holiday trip in Okinawa. Also, in an interview with Misaki Daimon, the actor who played Keisuke in the film, the night chase is confirmed 100% to have been shot in the daytime, and also the fact that all the audio had to be re-recorded due to the fact that there were passengers on board talking and having fun while music was playing on the deck, so everything you hear is re-recorded in that sequence. This movie has much more to do with the Rukian people of Okinawa and their mythology with Shisa than the and the mystery of the statue than it does with the alien invasion plot. Most people only talk about the alien invasion side of this movie. I more want to talk about the Ryukyan side of the movie which has a lot more to do with the plot of the film. Shisa is a piece of Ryukin mythology. It's a type of ward usually to protect against evil. Commonly depicted as a lion-dog hybrid, the statues are typically placed on rooftops or flanking gates. Also worth noting that King Caesar is not the only time Shisa statues have been used as the base of a kaiju. In Ultraman Jeed, Connect the Wishes, the monster Google Shisa is also derived from Shisa statues and is primarily used as a guardian character in the movie, as the film is primarily set in Okinawa. To switch tracks over to the monsters real quick, the design work for the new monsters in this film is fantastic. King Caesar looks awesome, full of the fun detail of the Terushi Nakano monsters in the, of the Champion Festival era, but also feeling connected to the Shisa statues in a lot of ways. Mechagodzilla in this movie looks unbelievable. I forgot how cool he looked in this movie. Like, the design is phenomenal. It is this classical, straight edges, hard lines, 
dull silver colored Mechagodzilla. It looks aggressive, it looks mean, it looks alien. That's what I like about it. It looks, it looks alien, but also looks like Godzilla. There's one thing with Mechagodzilla that not many people talk about, and that is why he has to look like Godzilla. Most films give explanations, some don't. This film gives the explanation that he needs to be imitating Godzilla when he first appears. The set design in this movie is great. The alien control rooms of Jun Fukuda Godzilla movies are genuinely great. I adore the 70s look. Also, the aliens are apes in this movie. They are apes in disguise because Japan loves Planet of the Apes. I don't know why they love it so much, but they just adore it. The score of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla is really good. It's a very jazzy sound. The score was composed by Masaru Sato. This was his last film on the series he did, and he went out with a really high note. It's a really good score. The special effects work in this movie was done by Teruyushi Nakano. He produces some of his best work in the entire series in this film. From the immersive snowy coastline opening sequence of the film, where Angerus is screaming for Godzilla as a mountain explodes for some reason. Actually, no. Why does a mountain just blow up in the first, like, 30 seconds of this movie? It's not King Caesar. Is it Mechagodzilla? Is it the aliens crash landing on Earth? What is it? Genuinely, I have no idea what it actually is. It's just a cool way to start the movie. The set for the flaming industrial complex that Godzilla and Mechagodzilla have their first fight in is fantastic looking, even if they should have chilled out with the flash frames. As you can see, the wall of the set. You see Godzilla's shadow on the wall of the set. Teruyushi Nakano is known for his pyrotechnic work. This movie goes insane with the pyrotechnics. The explosives are intense in the film, as Mechagodzilla is more or less a walking tank through the whole film. He can do physical combat, but he's at his best when he is at range using all of his different weapons. I will be revisiting the walking tank point in another video, so keep your eyes out for that. Imitation Godzilla looks great. It really works with what they're trying to do with it. They Throughout the movie, they constantly swap back and forth, back and forth. Through, their, through the imitation Godzilla sequences between the fake suit and the actual suit, creating this weird feeling in the audience. And one interesting thing is that this movie has this tendency to use flashing lights before Godzilla shows up. I don't know if this was intentional or not, but it very closely mirrors Godzilla's very first appearance in the original Godzilla when he attacks the boat at the beginning of the film. Also, I have this DVD box for the film, which was a Japanese exclusive merchandising item. Came with like posters and came with this little guide for the film. And it also included this manga adaptation of the film. It's mostly just a cut down version of the film. It doesn't feature Angerus at all. The aliens just stay as apes the whole time. And also, I just thought it was funny that Mechagodzilla flew like this. Overall, I think this movie is phenomenal. And you should check it out if you get the chance. I hope you learned something from this video. And I'll see you next time where I cover this movie's pseudo-remake, 1993's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2.